In recent years, the landscape of world sprinting has been shifting and there have been a number of breakthrough performances by athletes from regions that don't have a particularly strong tradition in sprinting. In this video, we're going to be looking at world elite sprinters of various nations and ethnicities and discussing how much of a difference genetic heritage potentially makes in sprinting ability. The first athlete we'll be discussing is Wade Van Niekerk. Wade has provided us with a unique look at his ancestral heritage by posting pictures to his Instagram of his DNA test results. Simply based off Wade's nationality and physical appearance, my assumption before seeing these results was that Wade would have over 50% African heritage, with the remaining heritage being mainly European due to the significant European settlement in South Africa. To my surprise, and also Wade's, 30% of his DNA was traced to the Philippines and Southeast Asia, while 19% of his DNA was traced to India and Bengal. When you add in his 1% of DNA from the Middle East, that means that 50% of his heritage is from the continent of Asia. 8% of his DNA was discovered to be Khoshian, 8% was South Bantu and 1% belonged to East Bantu. Less than 1% was West Bantu, which equates to just over 17% African heritage. When we look at his results from Europe, it turns out that he is 22% English and 5% Scottish, with several other parts of Europe making up another 6%, meaning that he's 33% European overall. Wade is the 400 and 300 meter world record holder, and has also run sub 10 seconds in the 100 meters and sub 20 seconds in the 200 meters, making him one of the all time greats of sprinting. 10 years ago, if you had told track analysts that an athlete who was almost 20% Indian and 30% Southeast Asian would break Michael Johnson's 400 meter world record, I doubt many would have believed you. But it shows us that just because your genetic heritage comes from regions that are underrepresented in elite sprinting, it doesn't mean that you should consider it a limiting factor. If we take a look around the world, many national records have fallen dramatically in recent years. Before 2019, the Indonesian national record stood at 10.13, making it the fastest national record among Southeast Asian countries. Then, in 2019, Mohamed Lalu Zori broke the record with a blistering time of 10.03 while he was aged just 18. Zori has spoken about being too poor to buy shoes growing up, but he was still able to run one of the fastest times ever for an Asian and junior athlete in just his third year of competing, which should serve as massive inspiration to those growing up in disadvantaged areas. In 2015, Su was the first Asian man to run 100 meters in under 10 seconds when he broke the Chinese record with 9.99. Six years later, and he lowered this record to 9.83, with five other athletes from China and Japan running under 10 seconds in the meantime. These performances shattered the former preconceptions of what the limits of sprinting were for Asian athletes. For the past decade, Jimmy Vico has been one of the most consistent sprinters in Europe with 22 sub 10 second performances, including a personal best of 9.86, which tied the European record. He also made it to the 100m final of three major championships in a row from 2015 to 2017. Vico was born to a French father and Ivorian mother, but his long standing reputation as Europe's fastest sprinter was taken this year by the new sprint phenomenon Marcel Jacobs. Jacobs was born to an Italian mother and African American father, and throughout 2021, he lowered the Italian record formerly held by Filippo Tortu down from 9.99 to 9.80. He ran the new European record of 9.80 in the 100m Olympic final, where he stunned everybody to take the gold medal. This win for Jacobs put an end to the dominance the USA and Jamaica shared over the Olympic 100m title since 2000. With sprinting becoming more globalised in recent years and reaching a wider audience than ever before, I believe we will start to see sprinters from more and more countries in contention for medals. Anyone who has been following sprinting for a long time may be aware that Patrick Johnson of Australia was the first man not of African descent to run the 100 metres in under 10 seconds. Like Fico and Jacobs, Johnson is biracial, being born to an Irish father and Aboriginal mother, and he ran the fastest time of the season in 2003 when he set the Australian record of 9.93. This record may be in jeopardy in the coming years, with the Aussie Rohan Browning showing major signs of improvement last year by lowering his personal best down to 10.01 at the Tokyo Olympics. Browning will be looking to take things a step further this year and reach the final at the World Championships in Oregon after he was eliminated from the semi-finals of the Olympics last year. Another sprinter who will have his sights set on the World Championships is Matthew Bowling. In the past month, Bowling ran under 10 seconds in the 100 meters and under 20 seconds in the 200 meters, making him the first white American athlete to do so. Bowling's personal best in the long jump of over 8 meters 
made him only the second athlete in history after Carl Lewis to achieve all three milestones in their career, which is a testament to how impressive of an athlete bowling is. If bowling can stay consistent and injury free between now and US trials, I think he has a decent chance of making it onto the USA's 200 meter team for the world champs, with Lyles receiving a bye as defending champion. If he was to accomplish this, it would surely put a stop to the doubters that say the hype surrounding him is based on his skin and not on the merit of his sprinting ability. Are we going to see any national records broken this season? Please leave your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.